Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we have a new 3D printer that we're gonna be unboxing and comparing our experiences to that one. So this should be pretty interesting, so let's get to it. So I got this printer from Banggood and the reason I bought it there because they had a good deal for this guy. So if you haven't guessed yet what this is, obviously it's hard to tell when it's in the box, but it's not very big. This is a Creality Ender 2. So this is their smallest printer and I think one of the first ones. It's been around for a while, so it's not like a new one, but it does have a reputation that stood the test of time. So the Ender 2 is still regarded as an excellent printer. So, and the reason I went for this guy is because we can compare it to this one here, which came pre-built, ready to go out of the box. I didn't have to do much to just plug that thing on, level the bed and get going there. This one will probably take a little bit more involvement because it is a kit and we are gonna have to assemble things and things like that. All right guys, so before we open this up, so I did get this printer for a really good deal at 130 bucks. It was on some kind of sale. I'm gonna show a quick screenshot so people are not confused. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open and we'll see what's inside. All right guys, so I made a little room for ourselves here and this is what we're greeted with looks like to be manual so we do have installation instructions here which will we will definitely need so and it's kind of just showing us pictures of how to put it together that's cool i guess they have the namings and the picture of what everything is called so this could be pretty useful if not anything you can learn what all the parts are called i can see a little knob right there but it looks like it's all taped i guess we can pull out the whole thing so they taped it up pretty nicely here so it seems to be packed very well and that's a plus and here is all the things that are included looks like so as you can see this printer is definitely not put together <laughs> it's a bunch of parts just laying around very interesting so right off the bat guys i'm gonna say that you know if you're not comfortable with this kind of stuff you know a bunch of parts in the pile and you got to put them all together you know this might not be a good option for you but if you don't mind or even enjoy like a kit style putting it together yourself you know then this is perfect so in this video we're gonna put this thing together and i'm gonna go step by step of how i do it so if you do decide to go the ender two way but it might just be worth it you know your time to go ahead and put it together if this thing prints more like a high scale printer so i guess we'll just have to see but i'm definitely excited about this kit because it'll help me understand about how printers work a little better and that's what i'm excited about let's take these parts out one by one and see what we have here so let's go with the power supply first here so it looks like just a normal looking power supply now we do have a switch here that says 110 to 220 voltage and we will have to switch that there is like this little molded plastic part and this is where all your connectors will go and this is a 12 volt 20 amp power supply so you get a tiny bit of filament and it looks like a sd card micro sd card with a little reader there it looks like some kind of tools that's cool uh looks like a bracket holder that has the word ender in it that's actually a nice little detail there. So it looks like we have stepper motors and this is what's going to drive the uh, the plates and all that stuff. It looks like this is the Z axis stepper motor. It does have like this little coupler here. They did give us a European plug. They also gave us the US plug. So I guess this is kind of a universal kit here. So it looks like a bracket, a piece from the spool holder, a little baby spatula. It looks like to be a tiny little needle to, I'm guessing, to clean out the nozzle. All right, looks like we have a pretty serious rail here. Ooh, there's some blue there, guys. Whoops. Z-Rod in there. Just fell out. And the blue is a nice touch. I guess that's the Creality signature there. So there's another rail back there that's smaller. All right, so maybe this is an extra little nozzle here. But it says 0.3 on there. That's really cool because, you know, we can print more details. So that's nice of them to give you another nozzle there. So it looks like we have, they're labeled here on the packages. This one says Y limit switch. We got another one here. This is a X limit switch. 
Z limit switch. So we have just a bunch of different kind of parts here. Looks like these are like just rollers here for the belt or something. So yeah guys, honestly I'm a little bit intimidated. There's a lot of parts and the instructions that came with it didn't look too detailed. But Alright, so here we have a pretty big assembly. So in total we have four motors. So we have the extruder, we have the X, and then the Z, and then the Y motor. Quite a few motors there. So here we have the aluminum bed. And so this is a heated bed, guys. So finally, we're going to have our first heated bed here. And then we have this little sticker here. Just 3M in the back. I guess they used to stick this on. And that's your printing area. I think this should be 150 by 150. And maybe 200 tall. All right, guys. So the last thing here we have is the hot end here. So I don't know what too much of what I'm looking at, but it looks to be pretty nice. Unfortunately, it only has one fan, and that fan blows just on the uh, on the extruder thing there, so that's kind of unfortunate. I guess we're going to have to probably do a little upgrade on this thing later, because I know that just from watching other people's videos and stuff, that you got to have air blowing down into the nozzle here. So let's go ahead and pull this main part out here. It looks like to be one piece. So here we have the LCD, which I think is supposed to be an OLED display or something, but I'm not sure. So we do have a little knob here. It feels really nice, actually. It feels definitely a lot better than the monoprice now. So we do have an SD, micro SD slot right there and the USB connection. But that looks like a pretty terrible way of implementing it because you're probably going to lose all that stuff in there. But this is the older printer, so you know you got to give them a little credit there. So in the bottom base looks like to be some kind of plastic. And looks like we have some kind of protector here over that. That's what that is. Guess we can peel that later. And here, guys, we have a little bit of information about the printer. So it is a 150, 150 by 200. So that's really cool. And all your wires and stuff, you know, that's that's all these connectors here we'll have to connect to. <laughs> to all the motors and the sensors and whatnot else. So. All right, guys, and this is all our parts here, which is uh, kind of a lot of stuff. So a little bit overwhelming, to be honest, for the beginning here. So I don't know if this is a, I, I don't know if I would recommend this as, you know, if you're a first printer here, guys. I'm a little bit technically inclined, and I can imagine if you never did anything like this, like put anything together, not something that you might enjoy. And, you know, when you put it together, you might not do it right. And then it won't work and stuff like that. So I think this is one of the things that the new printers are doing now is they're having it where they're pretty much almost assembled. You just have to connect a few major parts and you're good to go. In any case, I'm sure there's a lot of good tutorials out there to put these things together. So hopefully in this video, we'll be able to go step by step. And if you will still want to get a printer, that's a kit like this, the Ender 2, which is a great, great size guys. All right guys, so hopefully you can still hear me. I got you on a tripod on a different camera so we can see a little better what's going on here. So here in our parts list, we can see all the different components that are included. So I'm guessing this is a reference guide to the instructions here. I guess get the bottom. Is that what step one means? So step two looks like you, you know, we need the slide board and the Y modular. Anyways guys, this looks like it's gonna be a pretty interesting build here. All right guys, before we start putting it together, let's open this bag here because I, don't, I just realized that I don't think I've seen the belt yet. All right, so we have a, quite a few parts here and I think that's where the belt is too. So we have like all these little tools. That's nice. It looks like a pretty good quality Allen wrench is there. Some zip ties to organize wires and a pretty nice set of little cutters here. So it looks like we have quite a few parts here. So it says spare on there. I'm guessing that this are extra ones. And here's the belt that I was looking for. Looks like an angle bracket. Okay, I'm guessing that is probably, okay, platform. This is for the bed, to level the bed. And this looks like, I guess the nuts for the spool holder. That's what that is. All right, well, let's hope we can figure this out, guys. All right, so in the instructions here, it says get the slide board. So I guess that's this piece here. And we're just gonna roll it i guess into the uh to this okay oh wow that fit perfect there's literally no play in that so the other thing we need to do is we need to connect the y stepper motor looks like so according to the picture that looks like our y stepper motor right here doesn't have any labels on it to be a y but I'm pretty sure that's it so the bolts that hold it and the special little nuts here they are already installed we just have to loosen them and then we can slide it in so it has to go in there just like that so 
Unfortunately, these little nuts, they spin around in circles, even if they're in the channel. They're supposed to go just like that, if you could see that. But in any case, once you get it closer, I think, you know, just tighten it up. That part seems a little tricky. Like, it doesn't want to sit straight. I think for now, we'll just leave it like that. I don't have it too tight. All right, so it looks like we're done with step two here. So next, we'll go to step three. The Y limit switch, the timing belt, and the Y passive block. So we have a timing belt here, the Y limit switch, and the Y passive bl uh, block, I guess. That so I'm pretty sure it's that one because here it's showing us three screws. So it probably is this one. So the Y switch goes somewhere over here. So be careful when you take them out of the bag because these little things tend to hang up on stuff. All right, so everything connects on these little weird nuts so which they're kind of nice and everything but for some reason they just don't sit in the channel like I don't like I don't, like I think they should be sitting because once you put it in there they spin in circles inside the channel it seems to be a little bit annoying to have something you know moving around while you're trying to tighten it under there so I guess that's one of the things you got to deal with so I'm not sure how far this needs to go up there's no directions for that it just needs to be around here somewhere so what's happening is, you know, as this thing goes up and up, or wait, not up and up, side to side, because this is uh, the flat, this is the bed part. So as the bed goes around, this will be its home right here. Once it clicks on that, it'll get home. All right, guys, so that is tight, and it looks like we'll be working good here. So I guess we can go ahead and put our belt on. So there appears to be two belts, and they are exactly the same length. All right, so I guess we can use any of them. All right, guys, so so what you're going to do is you're going to feed the belt all the way down through the center of this channel here. So once you get the belt through there, you know, you're going to go over the motor here. And over here, you can see there's like little cutouts here. And that's where the belt goes. I'm not sure exactly how to put them in, but I think, you know, just kind of slide it over. So it seems to be like a little bit forceful here to try to get the belt in there. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it does go around that little corner there. It's just a little bit hard. You kind of have to force it in there. But it should be a pretty strong belt, so don't worry too much about, you know, breaking it, I guess. But yeah, that's how it goes, just like that. And then the other side here that comes out from the bottom, you know, will eventually connect here. But before we do that, we still need to, I guess, install this little uh, tensioner here. So, And that thing goes just like that right here. So yeah guys, so the belt goes over that, just like that, you know, and then you have to install it into here. Just takes a little bit of force there to, you know, make that turn on the corners there. So I got the first one here to cooperate, got that a little bit tight here. As you can see guys, they're just, they're spinning in circles inside, just so annoying. I think the channel is not the right size, because I don't know if they're supposed to, like if they're, I guess they're not, the tolerances are not there or something. Yeah, so far that's been the only kind of like not a pleasant experience here. Other than that, it's not too bad so far. So I'm not going to make that too tight yet. Let's go ahead and check all of our mechanism here. So we are running pretty good. Now I can tell. Now this one looks perfectly centered right here. I don't know if you guys can see or not. Yeah, you can see how perfectly centered that is. That's what you want. You want the belt to be perfectly centered. But this one over here on the motor is not. It's kind of... Well, maybe it's okay. It's just on the very edge over there. I'm not even sure if that's adjustable. Or maybe we can loosen the uh, little screw there and get this to go in a little bit. That's probably what we'll do. So I broke that loose. Oh, there's more than one. Okay. Alright. Okay, there we go. Okay, we don't want it to rub on the motor, but I can tell that we definitely have a little bit of a gap now there, so... I don't know if you guys can see, but there's definitely a little tiny gap right there. So we're just going to go closer to the motor there. Tighten this up really decently good. And now we definitely have a gap there, guys. Alright, so last but not least, you got to make sure your belt is tight, which it is not right now. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to loosen these just a little bit. So, you know, you just want to stick something in there and kind of pry on it with a decent amount of force, I guess. And then just tighten it up. And just make sure all your little nuts behind there didn't spin. 
and then tighten them back up and we should be good to go. Now we got a really good tension on this. I don't know if I can show you but you can hear that kind of I guess. Alright guys so I think I'm happy with everything down here so let's go ahead and move to the next step. Alright guys so the next step, step four, we will be putting the extrusion part that's going up there. So far these instructions have been kind of vague. I had to switch cameras the other one died but here's basically what I figured out. So this little packet here that says Z-axis fixed plate that's the one that has everything you need to install this channel here. So these bigger bolts here are the ones that go from the bottom in and then we got to install this little brace bracket here on the side of it. So we can see right here that these fit perfectly right there. So. so I guess you want the blue to be facing this way which is the front of the printer and then these two holes here where the bolts will go through and then this will go here and you know so don't make these tight yet just kind of you know put them in there where it's a little loose and the reason for that is because we need to still put this guy in so this piece actually goes on this side right here so far I have not been a fan of these nuts here they haven't been working as good as I thought they would it actually makes things a lot harder to install so now we just need to tighten these bolts here and we'll be done all right and that is step four all right so step number five is installing the Z rod and the motor there and the switch so I'm guessing we're gonna install the motor first and that's what that looks like and there we are so we're all the way down sitting and I think that's the way it should be the assembly here with those nuts make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be but it's understandable why the design is like this all right so I guess it just needs to sit on the bottom here and we're gonna go ahead and tighten it there all right so that should be pretty good right there all right so apparently this thing is called a T rod not a Z rod I guess so I don't think it matters which direction it goes it just goes in there oh well, I guess we're gonna go ahead and tighten this all right so that should be pretty tight it's a interesting design that they have on here it's like it flexes a little bit back and forth all right and the last part of this step is a Z, -Z switch here and it should go right here just like that so it's a little bit hard to get to so the confusing part to me is how do I turn these once I get it in there like once I get it in there there's no way I can turn it or at least that's what it seems like oh there we go Maybe I can with my hand. It seems very unreliable. But this one on top, obviously, I can move around. And uh, hopefully that's going to be good. But I guess we'll have to see later once we get everything on. All this, all the switches here are adjustable. So, so now we're just going to put that bottom bolt in. So I'm going to go ahead and snug all this stuff. Just in case we never come back to it. I want to make sure it's nice and tight. All right, guys, so next step is six. Believe it or not, we got one more step after that. So we're getting pretty close. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. The, and it looks like we're going to be installing all the uh, parts there, maybe even the belt too, because it doesn't say anything about the belt, but I'm pretty sure all of it will have to be put together. So on this part, we got quite a few pieces here that go together. So we got this huge dual motor extruder and the X-axis motor together here looking at the directions it looks like we need to install the X axis switch here so there is another piece that you have to screw in yourself here the extension piece it's kind of weird that it's not it was not in there from the beginning so before I put the switch on actually guys I kind of didn't think about this but I think we probably want to put this channel in first and I think it goes right here so there's two screws right here also guys this is kind of important you see this drilled out piece right here that's actually for this bolt right here so this goes over it so make sure you don't you know force this thing so the bolts are kind of hard to get to because this plate right here is in the way so you know it's a little bit tedious well now that I look at it guys this is what happens when you know you don't look hard enough but there's actually two holes right there 
that the Allen wrench fits through that you can tighten them up. So they did think through everything. So yeah, attention to those kind of things is awesome. All right, so now that we got the X axis here on there, I guess we can go ahead and put in the limit switch right here. Just a little bit, don't over tighten this stuff. And that's it, now we have the limit switch here for the X. All right guys, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this on the, the Z axis rail here, so. You can see right here, there's like an opening with threads. That's where the Z rod here, or the T rod, whatever it's called, goes. So when you're putting it in, go ahead and try here. I don't know if you guys probably can't show you very well here, but, but here on the top, you can see that I've kind of went in there. So now all I gotta do is I gotta twist this thing. Let's see which direction is that. There we go. Clockwise here, and you know, it screws right in there. As you can see, it's going down, and the screw has screwed in. So it looks like this guy is really sturdy in there too. So the wheels have been adjusted perfectly from the factory there. So there's no adjusting needed whatsoever. So we're starting to look more like a printer now. All right guys, so since we got this piece on now, we can go ahead and put in our main printer part. And this is supposed to just go right over here. Same way as all the other stuff have been going on. And this is also very tight guys, so. And that's it. Wow, that feels so smooth. All right guys, so this is where the adjuster pulley comes in next. And that will go over here on the back side, just like this, into here. And when you're putting things in, guys, this thing wobbles back and forth, and a lot of parts do like that on those little nuts, T-nuts or whatever they're called. You know, you, you wanna make sure it's level before you tighten it on everything, so. So the next part is the belt here. I think we need to put the belt in. So I don't know if I could show you guys, but here on the bottom of the hot end, you can see there's little two little grooves right there. And that's where the belt goes, the ends of the belt. Through the channel first on the top and then around this pulley here. And then on this side, we're gonna run it over the gear. You guys can see that hopefully. You know, and then down around, obviously. And that's it. So now we have two ends left right here. So now we need to connect them to this. So I'm just gonna grab it and slide it into the slot. So it should be as simple as that. Okay guys, hopefully you can see it's right there. There's just the slot. And what we need to do is we need to put it in there just like that. And I'm guessing that's how it goes. So now with this pulley up front, you know, you can loosen it right here and then tighten it, you know, however much you need decently tight. So you're gonna probably have to use like a little, either an Allen wrench or a screwdriver or something to pry on it from the top here and then, and then tighten it up but don't over tighten these guys also so once you tighten it to about where you think it should be guys make sure that your belt is lined up right here on the pulley so i'm going to go ahead and just go back and forth to make sure that our belt is okay all right guys so i have made a mistake and the reason i realized that is because I, when I was just playing with this, I realized that this was not touching my switch here. So what I did was I installed this backwards actually. So we're gonna need to take that off real quick. So yeah guys, instead of going on there like that, it needs to flip around and go on like this. So the switch needs to be on the inside. So now when this part goes into it, it'll click the switch. So now we only have a few more things to do. Obviously the spool holder goes up there and we still have to install the bed and then we need to plug everything in so let's go ahead and do the bed next so here we have a baggie called platform spring screw bag so this bed is all, only has three leveling points or mounting points so you're going to put your bolts through and then your springs go on the bottom then we're going to put them down in here all right so the bed is sitting on springs now 
knobs on the bottom here. They just screw right on. And that's how we're going to be leveling our bed. So we're going to tighten these guys up quite a bit. All right, so it looks like we got a little more room. So now we can go ahead and lower it some more. Okay, so I heard the Z switch click right there. So we still have a few millimeters before we get to the bottom of the bed. All right, so I'm pretty happy where it is right there. So we're just going to leave it there for now. So the instructions here on part, you know, the last step here don't really have much. Honestly, from six to seven, it's pretty vague. You kind of have to like figure out everything on your own, but you know, we haven't plugged anything in yet, all the electronics. You know, I guess from here on, you just kind of figure it out on your own. But they do tell you to put the spool holder up there. So I guess we can go ahead and do that. It has the two big nuts and two bolts. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put it through like this. Well, actually, no. You're gonna put the nut in there and then spin this to tighten it. Because the nut is about the right size. And then this part just goes on this side. And I guess that's what holds the spool in. Provided bolts into the to the channel here. Tighten this up pretty good. And that's it guys. Now we have a spool holder up here. Done. So that's a long way up for the spool up there. Alright guys, so we got most of our parts on. The next thing we need to do is plug everything in. And also we haven't, actually let's go ahead and do this. We haven't connected this tube here. I guess Bowden tube is what they call it. So all we got to do is just screw it into there. Just make sure you don't cross thread it when you're putting it in there. Well, here's something funny, guys. The hole here that this is supposed to go into is not even threaded. I'm not sure if they want you just to jam that in there and hopefully it sticks. I guess that's the plan. But it's kind of weird that it's not threaded. I'm going to try to push it as I turn it. All right, guys, so I'm as I'm spinning it here, I, I'm trying to force it to go where I want it to go at the same time. All right, so you don't want to over tighten that for sure because there's no real threads in there, so it's just all plastic. All right, guys, so we need to plug in a few things here. Obviously, we have a bunch of wires going over. So this looks like it goes to the power supply. So, so a lot of these little... Well, actually, uh, pretty much all these cables, they are labeled on the yellow things. They have numbers on it. So, like, this one says Z. So, I'm guessing the Z is this. So, we're going to plug it into the Z. Okay, so the bigger plugs, they go into the stepper motors. And then you have the smaller, smaller plugs here that also, let's say this one here, it says Y. So, that's actually for the, the switch. So, and then we got the last wire here which is says e on it which is for the extruder here all right so we got pretty much everything plugged in here so here we have a pretty thick wire here and that goes for the bed that's for the heating of the bed and that just clicks in right here guys simple enough so technically we are connected completely now everything is connected the only thing we're missing is our main power supply, which are these two wires right here. Now, the first thing you want to do before you do anything is switch it to your voltage because you don't want to forget about that. And then down here, they tell you how to hook up your wiring. And it's relatively easy. It's all labeled on the actual power supply here and also on the wiring. So here we have the, the V plus and the COM. So we would hook that up to one of these V pluses and a com. And the, and the first three, one, two, three here, we have, that's the, uh, you know, that's your power cable here. So here, these are also all labeled. So what you want to do is you want to put the wires through here first. So you're going to have to wiggle them through there a little bit. So. All right, guys, so we got our wires in there. So we got L, N, and then ground. So brown, blue, yellow. So same thing for the output to the printer run these guys through the and they do fit guys they're just really hard to get so this is pretty simple the red wire is going to go on any of the v plus here and then the com which is the negative and that's it guys we should be good to roll so everything should be pretty tight make sure everything's tight so now we can put our cover on here all right so i went ahead and put that little bolt in there and we're looking pretty good. There might be another one that can go in here too. So yeah, guys, there's two. There goes one that goes here and then one goes here. So not too crazy about how all this goes together. You know, you can't pull this too hard and pull it loose and you can kind of see the wires are coming out. So let's go ahead and do the last thing. I think it's the last thing. All right, so we just got to put the sticker on here. I guess it'll go just like that. 
it seems to be a little bigger than the actual bed so I'm going to try to make line it up pretty good before I let it go fortunately I can feel one of the bolts a little bit right here the one that tightens the bed maybe that's not that big of a deal these I can't feel that one I can kind of feel a little bit right here all right and so now we are officially done guys now this thing doesn't have any feet or anything so I think we're gonna have some work to do to do some upgrades to this thing and make feet and I don't know maybe enclosures or I know there's quite a few upgrades available so we're gonna be doing all that on later time so all right guys so it looks like the build went good so all we gotta do now is I gotta clean up and we'll plug it in and see if it works so the first thing we're gonna do is check to make sure that all our switches are working and all our motors are working all right guys so we cleaned up a little bit and we are ready to plug it in so here we go moment of truth hopefully nothing explodes three two one all right so far we're fine it sounds like the yes the fan on the power supply came on so unfortunately it looks like that we don't have a switch that we can turn off from the plug they put a switch here but not a switch to the power supply so the power supply is always on so maybe put on a power strip with a button or something i guess these are some of the things that are worked out already on the newer printers you know they don't have issues like this but in any case we're running here and everything's fine so let's see if this printer will power on i don't know if you guys can see that display or not but i might have to tilt it up but let me go ahead and push the power on here all right so it did light up some words on there it's really hard to read that display guys but hopefully you can see it there there's a bunch of information there and it says ender 3d ready on the bottom i can tell you just by touching it that this control knob here feels way better than the monoprice the monoprice was very clumsy and unpredictable this one actually feels good so this thing has a lot of controls looks like that you can adjust here i'm not sure exactly what that all is all right so i guess we need to do out of home let's see if all of our switches work and everything so all right guys so i'm going to initiate the out of home hopefully everything will go back to where it needs to be without damaging anything worst case i can turn it off real quick if anything weird starts to happen all right let's do it all right so the x and the y and now the z is heading towards its position so far so good guys and there it goes it found its position and our bed is just a little bit below the nozzle there so that's good so thankfully all of our switching is working the fan is on here so it appears to be that everything is running just fine okay so it looks like our nozzle and our bed are heating up together so oh yeah there we, that's definitely warm guys so it's definitely heating up pretty quick here and the nozzle is obviously also heating up so the nozzles at 110 beds at 43 right now 44 so it looks like everything is working to have only three points to level. All right, guys, so I leveled the bed and it looks fine now. So I went just a few times and made sure it was all equal. So I just eyeballed the little crack. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine. So what I want to go ahead and do and just print a little test print right away. I think it's ready to go. I can't figure out how to get the uh, extruder here to move in the settings they played around a little bit with it so we're just going to use this pla that they gave us for starters and what we're going to do is we're going to print a little wheel basically it's for my vacuums that we need so we're just going to go with it and see what happens guys that wheel looks flawless all right guys so it just finished i'm going to use the little spatula they provided here all right guys so that's what it looks like i don't know if you could tell but but as you can see the bottom turned out really really good so i got the monoprice printed wheel right here and honestly they look very identical guys it's really hard to see it's kind of harder to see in the white though the quality and the ender 2 has a little bit of an edge i think There's, it's just everything looks a little cleaner all right guys so i'm super happy that everything turned out good and i was able to print and everything works the motors work the switches work everything came together this is my first 3d printer that i was able to assemble so that's pretty exciting it was not as hard as i thought it was but i was a little bit overwhelmed with all the pieces and the uh, instructions not being so clear but if you like to tinker with things you could figure this thing out it's not that complicated if you're not good at putting things together this is probably not for you 
So you should definitely go this route here. Something that's already pre-built in the box. All you gotta do is pull it out, plug it in, and then you just learn how to level the bed and you're good to go. So the 150 by 150 by 200 guys, 200 going up is an awesome size, honestly. Now also I've noticed that this machine, it, it's quieter. Meaning like whenever it rolls around like this, Compared to that one, when it's moving around, it's more clinky sounding or something. I don't know. I can't even explain. But yeah, guys, overall, I mean, the first impression is awesome. I definitely like it, and I can't wait to see what I can print on this thing. But we'll have a whole video about comparing these two and which one you should get. So if you haven't seen my videos of that printer, go check those out. So hopefully, guys, you enjoyed this video and the unboxing and the build of the Ender 2. And also, guys, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming. 3d printing we got more printers that we'll be reviewing so stay tuned for that and if you enjoyed this video guys hit that like button and if you're new to 3d printing like i am and you want to stick around and we'll learn together and also to everyone that's enjoying these videos and you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace